The Timeless Diamond Geometry, a good old-fashioned quill stem, a couple of ultra-classic brake levers, all contrasting beautifully with modern and light double-butted steel tubes, super-performing tires and state-of-the-art hydraulic cable-pulled disc brakes. How did I manage to put all that together? I'm Francisco from Bicycle Picnic, let's get into it the frame set. There's so much to say about the frame set that I'm making a separate video about it. I'll put the link over here as soon as I have it ready. This is a custom made frame built by a local frame builder here in Brussels. He's called Gaetan and his workshop Le Curie. I was looking to build a randonner bike with a classic look but with compatibility with some current standards. We worked the concept together and the result is amazing and very unique. Depending on the level of details, this frame set costs between 1300 euros and 1500 euros, and that's without the paint. For the moment, I decided to keep it like that, only protected with a matte clear coat and for the inside I'm using fluid film. The drivetrain. I'm using a 2x9 drivetrain. The beautiful crankset is a strong light impact compact. Note that this is a square spindle compatible crankset, which is a little bit heavier than a modern holotech, but it was the only way to get a classic looking crankset. All holotech cranksets have a very modern look that wouldn't go with the aesthetics of this build. If you are trying to get a classic look on a bike, you can't miss on the crankset. You have to either use a real classic or something like this strong light, or this velo orange is a good option too, or the René hairs as well. All of them are square spindle compatible. The front and rear derailers are Shimano Sora, and these are the prices for all the parts of the drivetrain. Although I didn't really buy the derailers since I had them from my former touring bike the shifters. Here the options were either to use down tube shifters, bar end shifters or just conventional brifters like these. The shifters on the down tube are too uncomfortable to me and the brifters are great but it would be in conflict with the classic look of the bike. So I decided to go for bar end shifters that are actually pretty easy to use. I tried friction dia compa first but friction really doesn't work with 9 speeds at the back. I would often miss the right position and the chain would start jumping, very annoying. So I, I sent those back and I installed this very uh, cool Shimano Dura Ace and they are incredible. I got used to them very quickly and they are comfortable and efficient. In terms of the looks, I personally find them beautiful and having the shifters separated from the brake levers allows me to use real classic brake levers like this Aero Grand Compe, the brakes. Braking power was something I didn't want to compromise, so the combo I'm using is uh, traditional levers together with hydraulic brake calipers. The result is honestly fantastic and I'm really happy to be able to use these old classic levers and at the same time I can have excellent braking power no matter the weather conditions. The TRP High Road are about 200 euros for the pair the wheels. I'm going for 650B wheels because it gives me more room to put wide tires up to 50 millimeters. If I was running 700C wheels on this frame I would have to go narrower on the tires and I, I didn't want that. The other reason is that with 650B it's easier to avoid any potential to overlap. The third reason uh, is because the, the widest choice for gravel tires is on 650B. I built the wheels myself and here is a video if you want to know more about the advantages of building your own wheels. The front hub is a shutter precision dynamo hub. The rear hub is a Shimano M475. The spokes are double butted Sapim rays the rims are Alex rims MD19 and the tires are the Schwalbe G1 speed on 50 millimeters. Here you can see all the prices considering the parts as new, although the front and rear hub have been already used on another set of wheels. The lights. 
the Dynamo Hub powers a front Bosham Mueller IQXS and a real ultra minimalist Bosham Mueller Mai. All the routings for electrical cables are internal. The headset. The headset is an aluminum strong light A9, one each threaded. It costs about 30 euros. The stem. From the beginning, I knew I wanted to have a classic quill stem on this bike. A quill stem can go high without the annoyance of having to put a lot of spacers, like with the current standard of headsets. A quill stem is also incredibly more elegant than an oversized uh, a headset, and it goes very well with the aesthetics of this bike. The stem is a uh, 90 mm Nito with a 26 mm handlebar clamp diameter, and it costs about 80 euros. The handlebar. The match for the beautiful stem had to be 26 mm clamp diameter, and I was hesitating between the uh, Velo Orange Randonneur and the Crust Tower Rack. In the end, I decided to go for the Tower Rack because it's wider and has a shorter reach two characteristics that I like on a handlebar. On the handlebar, I put a Brooks rubber bar tape that has a very nice texture and it goes very well with the brake lever hoods and the saddle as well. The cross tower rack is about $125, which is more or less the same as euros at the moment, and the Brooks handlebar tape is about 20 euros. The saddle. The saddle is the handsome Celitalia flight with leather finish. The saddle costs about 140 euros. The mud guards. These are Velo Orange 650B on 50A mm smooth silver. They cost about 100 euros. Bike review. I'm super happy we got the geometry right. It can be uh, sporty if I got on the drops and very chill and relaxed if I'm on the ramps or the hoods. I got the perfect reach with a 90 mm stem and that was thanks to Gaetan and his adjustable fitting stem. So before ordering, I knew exactly the length and the angle I needed. My first impression when riding the bike was a feeling of suppleness I haven't felt on any other of my bikes. Um, there is a general compliance, but mostly on the front end, where uh, the combination of the traditional curved blades on the fork plus the stem handlebar combo play a major role. The 50mm Schwalbe G1 are also contributing with the shock absorption. I can take chunky gravel and cobblestones with no trouble and the bike feels like it's flying over everything. We designed the frame to have a, the shortest possible chain stays, just long enough to accommodate the 650B tires with mudguards. This helps to keep the rear end of the bike reactive and stiff for good transfer of power. The handbar is super comfortable, it has plenty of possible positions for my hands. The short reach and the flare put my hands in a really good position. The shallow drops are perfect for me and as they are shallow and easy to reach, I spend a lot of the time on them. The classic Aero Compe have an excellent performance in combination with the TRP high road hydraulic calipers. The braking power and the modulation are similar to a full hydraulic system. These brakes are very low maintenance and I find it cool that they open the possibility to use all material like these levers, but with the performance of the new technologies. This combination is one of my favorite features on this bike. I love having a fully equipped bike with fenders and lights. It's definitely the bike to take during the long winter months where a lot of the time the surfaces I ride on are wet or muddy. The fenders do a great job keeping the bike and myself clean. In winter, days are shorter and it's great to have the lights connected to the dynamo. For my winter rides, I love bringing my thermos. So I got this oversized topic bottle cage where the thermos plus the sleeve fit perfectly. For the rest of my stuff, I use this small 9 liters Caradise bag that I got for about 70 euros. Total price for the bill is 2960 euros, but that's considering all the parts as new. 
What I actually spent was 2,273 euros. This price is very reasonable for a fully customized bicycle. I hope there was some value for you in this video. Like and subscribe if you want to support the channel and see you next time.